Okay, well, welcome back. This is <clears throat> Vasily Spill, and as you see from the title, it's called Babylon Has Fallen, Is Fallen, That Great City. Now, this study is the, is the continuation of the Blow study that I encourage you to listen to first for context. And I think I've solved the, um, the audio problems on this uh, on my uh, recordings here, so I hope this sounds better. I, I realized that it, that it was my um, my headset, so now I'm just actually have the headset on the laptop, and I'm just speaking into the uh, the speakerphone as my headset rests on my laptop. So I'm still, but I don't have the laptop on my lap because that's not good for you. And I just was finished listening to a interview that Kim Greenhouse of It's Rainmaking Time did with Sam Milham the author of the book of uh, dirty electricity and laptops produce a lot of dirty, dirty electricity especially when they are uh, plugged into uh, the um, one, they produce less electricity when they're running on the on the battery power but when they're actually plugged into uh, a power outlet then uh, that's when they produce a lot of uh, a lot of dirty electricity but um, uh, that uh, besides the point. So this uh, Bible study continuation, the one I just put up, uh, which was titled uh, "Babylon the Great," is the ancient city of Babylon rebuilt and not Rome or the United States of America. So I, I really encourage you to listen to that uh, to that Bible study because uh, I, I give uh, quite a few scriptures in the Book of Revelation that show that indeed Babylon the Great is being referred to always as the literal city of Babylon that will be rebuilt. The city that's found in modern-day Iraq, and in fact, uh, it already is uh, being rebuilt. A king, uh, king. <laughs> uh, Saddam Hussein uh, thought he was King Nebuchadnezzar reincarnated, and uh, one of the things he did was he spent a lot of money restoring parts of uh, the ancient city of Babylon. So even uh, to this day, there there are, there are parts of it that have been rebuilt, and I think uh, at one point in time there were I think uh, U.S. Army men. Or Marines or something along that line that were protecting it and <clears throat> well that with that uh, that said let's go on to this study and just a little context uh, from the last study too. I have uh, some verse from the book of Revelation chapter 17 and it's gonna read them out here and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me saying unto me come hither I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, and upon her forehead was was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast shall uh, thee shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. And the woman, which thou sawest, is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So there's quite a lot here in the book of Revelation. I just gave you some scriptures from chapter 17. And this great whore is called, one of, you know, her name is, full name is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. That's, that's the name on her forehead. But she is the literal city, Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is the whore, is the woman of, of, of Revelation chapter 17 and 18 and 19 and 14 and 16. And she is called that great city. And verse 15 and other places in the Bible show that Rome, I'm sorry, <laughs> my apologies, not Rome. Rome is not Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is not a symbol for Rome or the United States of America. This city, Babylon, which will be rebuilt, is the city that is controlling and is ruling over, is reigning over the earth. And that's found in verse 18. And the woman which, and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So this is the city where the Antichrist will be reigning from. And this is the city where he will um, be ruling over the kings of the earth. This city will be the, um, I guess, the headquarters, if you may, of the New World Order. Now, now this study, I want to show you how this, how uh, there are scriptures that show that Babylon will fall, will fall, that great city. And the title of, of this Bible study is taken from Revelation 14.8, where it says, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. 
and because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of fornication. So Babylon is being judged for what she did, and and, and she's causing um, all nations to drink the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So God is rewarding her. Uh, what you reap, what you sow, you you um, you reap what you sow. So uh, she, uh, God, God's going to be judging Babylon, and we know that Babylon one day the rebuilt Babylon city in Iraq will be a city that will fall. Babylon has fallen, has fallen. So this is a prophecy of what will happen in the future. This has never happened, and this is definitely not talking about Rome or the United States of America. United States of America is not a city. Babylon is a city. Rome is not mentioned anywhere within the book of Revelation in regards to this great city called Babylon. Babylon is the literal city. So another scripture that shows that Babylon will be judged and that shows that it will fall one day is found in Revelation 18.2. And he cried mildly with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So again, we see that uh, in the future there will be a pronouncement of, of Babylon uh, uh, being judged, and it will, be, it will fall. It will cease to be uh, the great city. Now, moving on forward, and in, and also that you see how it will become the habitation or the dwelling place of devils. And the whole, sorry, well, this is um, talking about at that point in time where it is the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit in a cage of unclean and hateful bird. Isn't that interesting? Uh, going on further. Now, Isaiah 21, 9 is where the idea from revelations taken from uh, the the fallen fallen uh, uh, pronouncement against babylon is, is from the book of Revelation, is taken from isaiah 21 9 where it says and behold here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen and he answered and said babylon is fallen is fallen and all the graven images of her gods he hath broken unto the ground so this is again a, a prophecy of what will happen to babylon we see here that uh, within the city of Babylon, there are many Grayman images of her false gods that God will break down to the ground. Now, this destruction, this uh, judgment upon Babylon, it will fall, will happen suddenly. Uh, suddenly. Babylon, that great city, will fall suddenly. And that is shown also in Jeremiah 51.8, where it says, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain. If so, be she may be healed. So we, we know from here, Jeremiah 51, 8. And if you read Jeremiah 51, 50, 50, these two chapters talk a lot about the future destruction and judgment upon Babylon, which goes uh, hand in hand when you read Revelation chapters uh, 17, 18, and then the first part of 19, first three verses, and, and also in the book of Isaiah chapter 13. And 21, as you saw above, talks a little bit about uh, Babylon and its future judgment. So the next segment I have here is Babylon's judgment will come in one day and in one hour. So this is, again, uh, and then this is just uh, also showing that uh, Babylon will, will suddenly fall. How this, 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 this judgment upon Babylon will occur in a, such a short time period. It's, it's one day and one hour. And I'm going to show you that here in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 18, and uh, snippets of, 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 of verses. Not, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. And it says here, And he cried mildly with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, and, and sorry, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and is. And now verse 8, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. And what her plagues? Death and mourning and famine. And she... She referring to the city of Babylon, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. So we also know that that part her plagues deal with death, mourning, famine, and that she will be burned with fire. The city of Babylon, the literal city of Babylon rebuilt, will be utterly burned with fire. Verses nine and ten say, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning 
standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city. For in one hour is thy judgment come. So this judgment not going to be, you know, obviously we know we have a specific time frame. So there's no way we can we can say that, okay, this this city of Babylon will be judged for like three and a half years, for seven years, or, or, or for a year. It's literally within one one hour is her judgment come. The great whore Babylon will be judged in one hour. And it says in verse 16 and 19, and, and saying, alas, alas, that great city. So we see again over and over again how Babylon is referred to as that great city. Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company of ships and sailors and many and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, burning saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust in their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Okay, so Babylon the Great would be judged in one hour. She would be desolate. She would be burned with fire. And God will judge Babylon quickly, suddenly. Now, the next part goes into... I just want to touch briefly on the timing of of when Babylon's judgment occurs within the book of Revelation. And I'm going to show you that Babylon's judgment will begin with the events of the seventh vial. Now let's go into that. Revelation 16, verses 17 20. It says, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven and from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city, Babylon, and the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God. Great Babylon is that great city referred to in the beginning of verse 19. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. This is God's judgment, right? And we see that God's judgment happens with uh, on Babylon happens after the seventh angel pours out his vial into the air. These are events that don't happen before and don't happen uh, before. So this definitely happens with the, when the seventh angel pours of the air, this judgment come Babylon is come. And in verse 20, and every island fled away and the mountains were not found. Now, this next part, I'm going to go into what I, what I alluded to earlier, how, how uh, Isaiah 13 also talks about um, the, 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 the judgment upon Babylon and how Isaiah 13 is a is a uh, chapter that should be read uh, when you're reading Revelation 17, 18. You should bear in mind chapter 13 from the book, book of Isaiah and also Jeremiah 15, 51. But I'm going to read you the whole chapter of Isaiah and I've highlighted and, and, and bolded and, and, and such uh, parts that are uh, very relevant and uh, that stand out to me in regards to uh, the judgment of Babylon. So here we have it, Isaiah 13, 1 to 22. And I'll, I'll comment along the way. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos, or Amos, did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountains, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones, I have also called my mighty ones from mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains like as of uh, great people a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of the nations gathered together the lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle so this is definitely uh we see the we see that uh, god is 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 gathering together a, a mighty army here to battle and think about that in regards to its timing in the bible and end times in the book of revelation but i'm just gonna make you think about that one let's go further they came from a far country, from the end of heaven. Okay, so I'm going to comment briefly here. This army that God is mustering for this uh, battle, the Lord and Jesus Christ is the Lord of hosts, right? They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. 
That's interesting. Food for thought. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. So when, the, when, when God is coming back here with his army, he's come to destroy the whole land of what? Babylon. This is his judgment, his anger being poured out. Now here we have it. Here we have proof that Babylon's judgment will occur on the day of the Lord. How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. So we see that the day of the Lord is when Babylon's judgment will come in destruction and that it's coming from God Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one another. Their faces shall be as, as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, to destroy the land. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. So when God comes here on the day of the Lord, he's going to destroy sinners. Think about that too, in terms of its timing in the book of Revelation. And here is a key verse, and Lord willing, in a upcoming future, uh, upcoming Bible study, I'm going to go into detail about this verse 10. Now think about it. We see that the day of the Lord cometh, right? And we see the we know that Babylon is judged on the day of the Lord, and we know that from the book of Revelation that this judgment happens on the seventh. Angel pours out his vial. So look at the context of, of, of Babylon's judgment. Look at the signs that happen. And think about Matthew 24 and Revelation 6. And I'll leave it at that for now. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth. And the moon shall not cause their light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil. On this day of the Lord is when God will punish the world, not just the city of Babylon, but the world. Think about that and its context in the book of Revelation. Think about verse 10. Again, think about these events of the stars of heaven, constellation of when do we see these things happening in the book of Revelation? I'm oh, sorry, in the book of Revelation, be, uh, chapter 6, book of Matthew, be chapter 24. Please read them. And maybe you'll come to your own conclusions if you haven't ready in regards to the timing of the rapture, the timing of the Lord, the second coming of Christ, the judgment of Babylon, and tell me what you think is happening here. I think they're all happening the same day. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make... A man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Some more proof that this all these events are happening on the day of the Lord, the second coming of Christ. The destruction of Babylon will happen with the second coming of Christ, with the rapture of the saints. And the seventh after the seventh vial. And it shall be as a chaste roe and as sheep, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. I think of come out of come out of her my my people and, and what God tells um, the people that are living in his uh, born again saints and children that are living living in the city of Babylon. He's telling them to come out of her. That's what I think about when I read that part too. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. So these are people that are found in the city of Babylon. That's why God wants them to come out, because of the judgment upon them. But God's not going to force them to come out. So if they stick around, that's what's going to happen. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives. Well, it says here, they shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. So it sounds like, I don't think, I think only Babylonians are actually going to be sticking around there. I think everyone else that is not a native to Babylon will be will not be there according to that scripture. So that's cool. I just realized that. Sorry for, uh, I think I was saying wrongly earlier. So yeah, look at that. Every man turned to his own people and to, and to flee everyone into his own land. So yeah, it seems like only Babylonians will be in the city of Babylon. There won't be any Jewish people at that point in time. They will leave, and other people from other lands. Okay, anyways, going further, I'd like to look into that further on my own. Look into yourselves. Judge everything I'm saying according to the Word of God. 
I'm not perfect. Only God is in his word. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. So again, a second time in history, does God use Medes, the people of Medes, to... to uh, to go fight against Babylon. God will use the Medes as part of his judgment against Babylon, which is more proof that, you know, the Medes are not uh, going to be attacking at Rome. And to me, more proof that they're definitely going to be talk, uh, attacking the United States of America. <laughs> but it makes sense that, you know, God, a lot of times history repeats itself just in different different places. I mean, different times, but different people. But, you know, similar events happen. This is one of them. Well, God, once again in the future, will use the Medes and others actually, to go attack Babylon. Behold, I will serve the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. So they're not covetous at this point in time. Their bows shall dash the young man to pieces, and they shall have no pity. And the fruit of the womb, their eyes shall not, not, shall not spare children. And Babylon... So the city of Babylon, here we go again. Then Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you think about when God threw Sodom and Gomorrah, one of the things that comes to mind that it happened after God took out uh, Lot, took out Lot and uh, his fa his family. That's when he that's when he judged uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. So the same thing, God will take out his people. And then he will throw down his judgment on, on, on Babylon, just like he did on Sodom and Gomorrah. And we also learn from this, if you think about uh, when this judgment happened on Sodom and Gomorrah, it happened, in instant, it happened instantaneously. This was not a long, drawn-out judgment. It happened very quickly, suddenly, right? So and what also happens in verse 20, it shall never be inhabited. So Babylon shall never be inhabited. And this is proof... To me, that uh, Isaiah 13, uh, uh, Jeremiah 50, 51 has never happened yet because uh, Babylon is inhabited. And Babylon was inhabited during the times of uh, the Apostle uh, Peter. Uh, look that up yourself. He, he wrote, to, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he mentioned a, a church that was in, yeah, he did mention a church that was in Babylon in one of the epistles. Can't remember if it was the first or second, but anyways, going on. It shall never be inhabited, the city of Babylon, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there, but wild beasts, wild beasts of the desert, desert shall lie there, and their house shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satire shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and the dragons and dragons in their pleasant places, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. So that's what I have for you for this uh, Bible study. And food for thought, you know, really look into the timing of these things. Uh, I think it happens. Well, well, I believe it definitely happens with uh, with the seventh seal, as we as we saw here. Uh, up, up above here we saw that and we also know that if we read Isaiah 13 that the judgment of Babylon that this also happens on what's called the day of the Lord we learned about that too right so thank you for your time I, I hope this challenged you to, to, to learn more about, about prophecy I love prophecy I love end time events and um, yeah Babylon will be rebuilt it's uh, it is in the process of being rebuilt and God will, will one day judge Babylon and it will never be inhabited again. And this happens with events that are around the same time as when this happens. I'll leave you with that because this will be the, the next study. We'll focus on this verse right here. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light, and the sun shall be darkened and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause their light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil. God will punish Babylon the same time that these events happen in verse 10. And those that are uh, like like uh, like prophecy and, and are familiar with Matthew 24, wow, think of the connection here. And does it fit in with your with your timing of events? Does it fit in with uh, what, what you just read about right here in regards to the judgment of Babylon? Does it fit in within your timetable? Are you a pre-tribulation rapturist? Listen to this. Are you a so-called post-tribulation rapturist that believes in the two-stage coming of Christ? I think 
Bible clearly teaches a post-tribulation, one second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, that these events will happen, these events of the stars of heaven, and we know that immediately after the tribulation of those days, these events happen. So I think the Bible here in Isaiah 13 is clearly teaching a post-tribulation rapture of the saints, and that this is the same day of the battle of Armageddon. And that, I'll just leave you with, we found right here. The Lord of hosts monstrous the host of battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Follow you for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. God will judge Babylon. God, judge, God will judge, in this, judge, God will judge <laughs> the whole world at the battle. The day of the, the, day of the Lord is the same day as the battle of Armageddon. Thank you for listening. God bless you all. I'm going to go back to page one. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city was this Bible study. And I hope you would also listen to again, Babylon the Great is the ancient city of Babylon rebuilt and not Rome or the United States of America if you haven't listened to that yet. And I hope to talk to you again soon and be back with another uh, Bible study. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.